I'm afraid you're on a wild goose chase, Mr. Chan. Uh, sometimes uh, caught wild goose. Well, if you ask me, there's something fishy about the whole business. A man walks out on a fortune seven years ago. Then all of a sudden, he appears from nowhere to claim it. A little tough on the Colby heirs if he's alive. Tough on Alan Colby if dead. Uh, bring him up now. not that of Alan Colby. Well, I guess that ends it. Uh, not so certain. Passenger list indicate 30 persons on board. 27 rescued by lifeboats. Two bodies recovered today. 27 plus 2 make 29. Leave one body missing. Maybe Alan Colby escaped by clinging to wreckage. Well, if he did, the sharks got him by now. You can't drift around in these waters for two weeks. May have been picked up by boat without radio. Must not overlook any possibility. Mr. Chan, I found this in one of the bunks. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Initials AC. Alan Colby. Sorry to get Duke aboard, get out of the way. How soon we make port? Oh, a couple of hours. May I send radiogram, please? Sure. They can relay it from the land station. What do you want to say? To Mrs. Henrietta Loyal, San Francisco. Fate of Alan Colby still uncertain. Leaving Honolulu at once on new clipper airship to continue investigation on mainland. Sign Talichan, please. There can be no doubt, Baxter. Alan is dead. It was a message from his father. To be perfectly frank, madam, uh, this sort of thing makes me quite creepy. Oh, nonsense. A radiogram, Mrs. Law. We haven't finished yet. Sit down. Hand me the telephone. the wire, Alice. You can talk to Dick some other time. All right, Mother. In just a second. Dick, I'll have to go now. All right. Now, remember, darling, we've got a date tonight. If the chief doesn't send me out on the story. Well, I like that. You think more of your old newspaper than you do me. Well, Dick, I simply must hang up now. Mother wants to use the phone. 
Of course I do. Bye. Call Mr. Phelps' office for me. Yes, ma'am. What is the wire? Another radiogram from Charlie Chan. He's arriving sometime today. The line's busy, ma'am. Try again. And remind me to call Professor Bowen. I want to tell him that we're holding a seance tonight at 8.30. If you have nothing else to do, take some flowers out to Colby House. And tell Ulrich to have everything ready. Oh. All right, Mother. Do you want Baxter to help you? No, thanks. I'll Shanghai Dick. Hello, Mr. Phelps. Just one moment, Mrs. Lowe. Hello, Warren. It's your mother. Yes, Mrs. Lowe. He's arriving today. Yes, everything concerning the estate is in order. I've been going over matters with your son-in-law. He and Mrs. Gage are here now. Certainly, I'll tell them to be there at 8.30. Yes, I'll come too. Goodbye. Was she talking about Alan? No, Charlie Chan. He's arriving this afternoon. He must have definite news about Alan. Otherwise, he wouldn't be coming all the way from Honolulu. I don't see why a mother had to drag him into this. Well, you can hardly blame her for being worried. If Alan is alive, it places a great responsibility on her. But from what you've said, it places a great responsibility on all of us. We'll have to turn the estate over to him and account for every penny we've spent. Well, after all, it was his father's money. But mother was Uncle Bernard's sister. Regardless of Alan, she should be entitled to something. Unfortunately not, if Alan is alive. Where were you when I called at the office? No, wait a minute. I had to go out on a story. So I phoned your mother and she said you were coming here. Well, I wanted you to help me with these flowers. Uh, more spook business tonight? Oh, please don't kid about it, Dick. At least not when Mother's around. I'm always nervous when I come to this old house. Oh, don't worry. I won't let the old boogeyman get you. I want you myself. Even if Alan came back and claimed all the money and I was poor? Say, when I'm married, I don't expect to work for a living. Oh, go away. You're just a fortune hunter. How'd you guess it? Dick, what's that? Well, it's not a ghost. Oh, it's Lucifer. 
something must have frightened him. There, Alice. You had the solution to all ghost stories. Not to all the things that happen in this house. You know, I don't see why your mother doesn't have this old squirrel's cage torn down. She's too devout a believer in psychic research. Why, this place means as much to her as it did to Uncle Bernard. Yeah, and he was a little cracked. Oh, don't say that, Dick. He believed in it. That's why he rebuilt this house with all these funny rooms. So the poor spirits could have a home. Come on, let's get out of here and go somewhere that's a little more cheerful. Not yet. I have to arrange those flowers for tonight's seance. And you're going to help me. I very rarely visit the old house, sir, since Mr. Colby died. It was only because of your late arrival that Mrs. Lowell told me to bring you here. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure, sir. I don't mind admitting to you frankly, sir, that I don't feel at all myself in this atmosphere. No? No, sir. There's a tinge of the graveyard which positively awes me. Yes, mysterious shadows of night they cling to old house like moss on tombstone? Quite right. Quite right, sir. That, sir, is the, uh, is the front door. The, uh, the back door is at the rear. Most interesting. Shall we enter by front door? Yes. Yes. This way, sir. The family will be waiting for you in here, sir. Uh, these are the accounts you spoke of, Miss Lowell. No, not now. Mr. Chan. Oh, I'm so glad you arrived, Charlie. I knew I could depend on you. Uh, you know everyone here. Good evening, Mr. Chan. Chan. Uh, greetings at end of journey, like refreshing rain after long drought. Yes, yes, Mr. Chan, but uh, let's get to your report. Uh, yes, Charlie. What about Alan? Uh, Then it's your belief that Alan is still alive? Cannot be certain. But if so, suspect life may be in danger. Now, why do you say that? Observe. More than one attempt made on Alan Colby's life. Just a scheme to create an impression. This fellow may be an imposter. Correction, please. Passport, these aid by French and British consuls, indicate he is real Alan Colby. Then why did he wait all these years before communicating with his family? Investigation proved Alan Colby enlisted in French Foreign Legion, was taken prisoner by reefs, escaped only recently, could not have communicated sooner. Well, then, unless he was drowned, we can expect him to appear at any time to claim the estate? He has a right to the money, more than we have. What is it, Ulrich? Uh, Professor Bowen and Carlotta are ready to start the seance. Tell them we'll be there in a moment and see that we're not disturbed. I can't stand that man. He's forever staring at me. Why don't we get rid of him? We've gone over that before, Janice. Shall we go into the other room? Well, perhaps Mr. Chan would rather wait here. He may not be interested in a seance. I am sure he will be. Tonight, Professor Bowen has promised us a message concerning Alan. I would like to have you present. I would appreciate very much. Uh, Chinese people interested in all things psychic. Have they started the seance yet, Ulrich? They're just about to begin, Miss. Thanks. You're always causing me grief. If we'd been late, Mother would have been furious. Is everything ready, Baxter? Uh, yes, ma'am. Sorry, Mr. 
sorry I'm late, Mother. All my fault, Mrs. Lowell. Say, you're Mr. Chan, aren't you? Humbly acknowledge the name. Glad to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. I'm Dick Williams of the Globe. Anything I can print on the Colby case? There's nothing for publication, Dick. I've asked you repeatedly to consider our family affairs confidential. Yes, but... Uh, Mr. Gage, very wise. The uh, best place for skeleton is in family closet. Thank you. <laughs> nothing to say. Come, Charlie. This is Professor Bowen, our advisor in psychic research. And this is our medium, Carlotta. So pleased. Most fortunate gift to be able to cross bridge to dwelling place of honorable ancestors before arriving. Shall we begin? If you'll take your usual seats, we will commence. Take this chair, Charlie. Will that be all right, Professor? Quite all right. Tonight, I wish to ask for your special concentration. We will try to bring word of Alan Colby from the beyond. It may be difficult. We shall ask his father, Bernard Colby, who has been our guide before, to assist us. We will pause a moment in meditation. Mr. Gage, will you turn down the lights? There's a presence here. He has a message for Mrs. Lowell. It is her brother, Bernard. He says that Alan is there with him. He is happy. He wants to come to you. Colby, murdered. Notify police immediately. Touch nothing! Until police arrive. Thanks for your information, Mr. Chan. You're welcome. You know, what beats me is how Alan Colby got ashore without our getting wind of it. Well, somebody knew it. That's how he trapped Colby here and finished him off. Yes, he must have been trapped all right. You know, Alan was the type of fellow who could have defended himself. A knife in the back. If strength were all, Tiger would not fear a scorpion. Not a sign of fingerprints. No, he used gloves or a handkerchief. This fellow was smart enough for that. I have observed the former resting place of murder weapon? I've already checked that. No fingerprints there either. What did you find, Doctor? A uh, knife pierced right ventricle of the heart. He's been dead about four hours. Do you want an autopsy? Oh, no, not necessary. See you in the morning. Oh, Harris, got the rest of them in the other room? Yes, sir. Come along, Mr. Chan. You too, Williams. I want to talk to everyone who was present here tonight. Bowen, you must have been pretty sure Colby was dead when you started your seance. That isn't true. We were merely seeking a message concerning him. Just before this terrible thing happened, I felt a strange new presence about me. I knew we were in contact with Alan Colby's spirit. And with his body hidden behind the panel, it was easy for his spirit to get here, wasn't it? Pardon the interruption, please. <laughs> May I ask cause of Alan Colby's separation from family? Oh, certainly, Charlie. There had been a quarrel, or rather, a misunderstanding between Alan and his father. You see, Alan didn't share our belief in psychic things. 
Is this digging into family affairs necessary? It is when we're looking for facts. If all I wanted was a motive, I wouldn't have to go any further than the Lowell family. What do you mean by that? Simple enough, isn't it? Alan Colby alive meant the loss of a fortune for all of you. So sorry again to interrupt. Uh, money from uh, Colby estate used for psychic research? As executor of the estate, I can answer that. Only such sums were used as Mrs. Lowell saw fit to donate. And that would have ended, too, if Colby had returned. Yes, I suppose so. Were you here earlier today? Why, yes. I stopped by Ulrich's cottage about six o'clock to remind him to have everything in order for the seance. You were here at house? No. I've had a slight cold, and I left almost immediately to take care of it. Is that right? As far as I know, it is. Pardon undue curiosity. You were here all day? That's what I get paid for. Strange you did not know Alan Colby had arrived. I said once, I didn't. Who else besides Professor Bowen visit here today? Why, I was here. You also? What for? He came here to meet me when I brought the flowers for the seance. What time was that? Uh, I was here first. Alice came in at 5.30. I'm sure of the time because I noticed the clock was fast and I was about to reset it. Strange. Ancient clock tell very latest time now. Someone must have fixed it. Well? Who reset the clock? You don't think I'm lying, do you? You arrived at what time, please? About quarter past five. And the murder took place around five o'clock. I can tell you, Morton, there was nothing wrong when I was here. You and Miss Lowell were planning to get married shortly, weren't you? Why, yes. What of? Congratulations. Haven't we had enough of this inquisition? For tonight, yes. But until this matter is settled, be on hand to give the authorities any help they need. That's all. Excuse, please. Uh, another headache for the police department. Yes. Have you any ideas, Mr. Chan? Uh, solve mystery, cure headache. <laughs> okay, we'll split a box of aspirin. Oh, Harris. Uh, see you in the morning? Uh, thank you. We'll bring aspirin. <laughs> Ambulance here? They just arrived, sir. The men are coming in now. Almost finished? Yes, last plate. <laughs> I guess I'll have to quit. Pretty hard to catch up with murderers these days, Mr. Chan. Especially when they don't leave their signatures. That's what I call fingerprints. Signatures. When they do leave them, it's just like signing their confession. <laughs> yes, uh, fingerprints are uh, very valuable if detective can catch owner of fingers. That's right. <laughs> Found anything interesting? Uh, as Sun Lee would say, play hunch. Charlie. Excuse, please. There you are. Come along with us. We'll put you up at the house. Thank you so much. But with your permission, may I spend night here? Here? Yes. Would like to make more complete investigation. Oh, very well. As you wish, Baxter, prepare one of the bedrooms. And you had better remain here with Mr. Chan tonight. Oh, oh, all night, may I? Certainly. I'll send something over for your breakfast in the morning, Charlie. But what about your breakfast, ma'am? Nobody knows how you like your toast but me. I know how I like my toast. Good night, Charlie.
quiet little place, uh, isn't it, sir? Yes, uh, very restful. Oh, yes, sir. Like uh, silence in graveyard. Oh, yeah, yes, sir, uh, like a graveyard. This way, sir. Uh, after you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, what the, oh, hello, sir. Observe. Oh, very interesting, sir. Very, very interesting. May I inquire what it is, sir? Corroboration of deductions. Then we can leave here at once, sir. Should I pack your bags? Thank you so much. But uh, must first request able assistance in subduing malevolent spirits in ancient house. What do you mean, sir? We investigate downstairs. No. Now, sir? Yes, sir. Do you think that could be spirit, sir? Very practical spirit to enter by door. That's all. And see that those gates are locked. Well, here I am. Why are you come back? You said you were staying here to investigate. I won't know what's going on. Uh, others know you return? I don't tell them everything I do. Think advisable Baxter take you home immediately. <laughs> He's quite right, ma'am. Now, I think... You don't think. You think you think. I think. Uh, where shall we start? In here? Very well. Perhaps a uh, woman's intuition, like feather on arrow, may help flight to truth. That's settled. Baxter, the door. Well, Charlie? May I ask a question, please? Anything you want to. Phenomenon of music always accompany seance? Oh, nothing unusual about that. That was merely a manifestation from the world beyond. Electric fixtures uh, repaired recently? No. They haven't been touched for years. Uh, may I step on the table, please? Certainly, Charlie. Very strange. Brass tarnished with age. But screw head, very young. Boy scout knife, like ladies hairpin, have many uses. Radio speaker. Very simple solution of music from a world beyond. I can't believe that Professor Bowen and Carlotta would purposely deceive us. Necessity, mother of invention. But sometimes, stepmother of deception. Distinguished professor, stand here tonight.
switch. Turn on radio receiving set up there. If Bowen has done this, then all of our seances have been based on trickery. When pilot unreliable, ship cannot keep true course. Permission, please, to try experiment. Certainly. Turn down lights, please. Then we shall be able to see, sir. Do as Mr. Chan says. They're off, sir. Thank you so much. Please to turn on dim light, as in seance. Appearance of Alan Colby in secret panel, most convenient. Maybe find clue. Please. Would be so kind to take position occupied by deceased Bobby. Oh, could I be excused, please, sir? I, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Uh, role of dead man require very little acting. Oh, but really, sir, I... Go on, Baxter, go on. Uh, may request uh, holding handkerchief before face when in position. to wipe face of Alan Colby. Oh, no, really, sir, I... Be quiet, Baxter. What about the handkerchief? Chemical analysis of same prove face of murdered man treated with solution of quinine sulfate. For what reason? Quinine sulfate, when exposed to rays of ultraviolet lamp, produce mysterious light which accompany apparition. Well, where could it come from? Answer well hidden, but hope to find same. Please, do not move the handkerchief. Ultraviolet ray lamp. Filter on back of mirror allow only invisible ultraviolet rays to enter room. Solves mystery of spirit life. It solves more than that. It proves that Bowen knew that Alan was dead. He may even have murdered him. Finding web of spider does not prove which spider spin web. I gave Bowen all the funds he asked for. I even made provision for him and Carlotta after my death. And they knew that if Alan returned, they would never receive another penny. In face of present evidence, may be wise to change plans for future. <laughs> I'll see to that. Mr. Phelps has an accounting of the estate prepared. I intend to go over it. And at the same time, I'll make a new will. Most excellent precaution. You are all right? Except for the punch in the ribs you gave me. You knocked me down. <laughs> Most happy. Punch in the ribs more desirable than shot in back. There's no argument about that. Where's Baxter? 
Baxter! Here I am, ma'am. <laughs> you would be. Well, what do we do next? Suggest leaving here immediately. That's a very good idea, sir. We are locked in, sir. Locked in? Nonsense. Can you hear that, sir? Oh, Fred, it's you. What's happened? Somebody tried to kill Charlie. What? I think you acted very foolishly in coming here at this hour of the night. Fear for Mrs. Laurel's safety? Reason for visit? Exactly. Janice and I went to her bedroom to say good night. When I found she wasn't there, I had a hunch she was over here with you. I saw her car outside and came in. Thank you. Suggest you go home now. Uh, with Baxter. Have something very important. Would like your able assistance. Of course, if there's anything I can do. Now, look here, Charlie, I want to know. Uh, tomorrow, I... please. <laughs> you go home now? Oh, very well. Come on, Baxter. Thank you. Observe anyone leaving house when entering grounds? Not a soul. Ulrich admit you? No. The gates were unlocked. Strange. Someone very familiar with ancient house, fire gun from there. I know this place, inside and out. It's a regular honeycomb of passages that start everywhere and end nowhere. You want me to show you? No. That? We'll investigate honeycomb later. Maybe find B. Shall we go? Present much concerned about Mrs. Lowell. What do you mean? Not so certain gunfire directed at humble self. You think the attempt was made on her life? Maybe. Suggest you go to police at once. Request guard for Mrs. Lowell, day and night. I'll go immediately. Caretaker, keep very late hours. Ulrich's a queer old bird. I've noticed Ulrich not friendly to family. May I ask reason why? Oh, Alan was engaged to Ulrich's daughter. After he left home, he broke with her and she committed suicide. Ulrich held Alan responsible. Strange house have more than one skeleton in closet. Good morning. May I ask a question, please? You were here yesterday at cottage about five o'clock? Yes. Then if Alan Colby, ring bell, would have heard the same? Well, I didn't hear it. Strange. Someone should climb over wall without first trying bell. If someone were sneaking in here to commit murder, do you think they'd ring the bell to let me know about it? Correction, please. Murderer would not climb over wall near gate. Would look for more secret place. Thank you so much.
What do you want? Uh, pardon, intrusion, please. Observe uh, radio aerial on roof. Well? Perhaps earphones reason for not hearing bell yesterday when Alan Colby arrived. I tell you, I didn't hear the bell. I don't know where I was or what I was doing. Radio transmitter used last night to broadcast music for sales. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't know nothing about radio. This stuff belongs to my son. I'm shipping it to him. You can't catch me on that. <laughs> Only thing Tully Chan catches is cold in head. <coughs> Can uh, spare quinine, please? I haven't got any. Perhaps give to Professor Bowen, who suffered from cold when visiting here yesterday. Why don't you go and ask him? Very good idea. Thank you so much. So sorry, Professor, not at home. Hope to get valuable information about seance last night. Can I help you? Thank you. Small point of information. When in contact with spirit world, find ultraviolet light useful? I don't understand you. Very peculiar circumstance. Alan Colby's face treated with solution of quinine when exposed to ultraviolet light, produce glow, not from spirit world. If what you say is true, Mr. Chan, it has nothing to do with us. There has never been any fraud connected with my work. The power which was given me to communicate with the other world has never been misused. Have utmost respect for true believer in psychic things. But uh, can explain, please, source of music which accompanies seance last night? Yes, I'll show you. It was sent from this transmitting set. We always use music as a background for our work. Hmm. Most interesting. Repeating device with control switch at Colby House, so music can be picked up at any time? Short wave coil. Hmm. That ought to keep him quiet long enough for us to make a getaway. Then it's true. You knew about Alan Colby. There's no time to talk now. If Chan was that close on us, the police won't be far behind. Come on. I'm not going. I was no part of it. But you can't prove that to the police. Where's Bowen? You'd better go in there at once. Charlie, what happened? Get a chair. Are you all right? Uh, when firecrackers stop exploding the head, we'll be quite all right. You need the aspirin this time, Charlie. Now, where's Bowen? He left just before you came in. So that's why you sent us in here. You were covering up for him to make a getaway. You're under arrest. Take her out, Harris. Let's go, sister. Get on the phone and send out a general broadcast. Yes, sir. I want to be the first to congratulate you, Charlie. You let the murderer of Alan Colby slip right through your fingers. So sorry. Like child who play with matches, get burned. Live and learn. Yeah, live and learn. When we pick up Bowen, I'll send you an invitation to the blow-off. Thank you so much. I guess Morton's right. It must have been Bowen who killed Colby and tried to get Mrs. Lowell last night. 
Wheel of Fate has many spokes. Which means you have something on your mind. What is it? Uh, mind at present like hangover after misspent evening. <laughs> Must keep important engagement with Mrs. Lowell. A hat, please. and the sum of $100,000 to endow the Colby Foundation for Psychic Research. Uh, such foundation to be administered by Warren T. Phelps on behalf of my dearly beloved friends, Alfred and Carlotta Bowen. That is the clause you want to strike from the will? It certainly is. Well, then I'll draw up a new document. I'll have it ready for your signature tonight. Have you any idea how much these people have cost me so far? I'll have to check over your accounts to get the exact amount. We're going over all the accounts tonight. And Mr. Phelps brings the new will. Alrich wants to see you, madam. What is it, Alrich? I've come to quit. That will be a relief. And it'll be a relief to me, too. I don't have to stay here to be spied on by policemen. I don't know anything about Iron Colby. It's his fault that my girl is in her grave. And he got what was coming to him. That's enough! Wait in the hall and I'll pay you off. In my opinion, it would be better to watch Ulrich than look for Bowen. He's hated Alan enough to kill him. No one being overlooked. When weaving nets, all threads counted. I'll be back with the new will after dinner. Make it 8.30. I'll have those figures ready for you by then. And don't worry. Mr. Morton will have a police guard here until Bowen is captured. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, dear. Well, Charlie, what are your plans? Uh, what hour is dinner, please? 7.30. And after dinner, what is usual occupation? Generally, I spend an hour here at the Ouija board. I must repeat, madam, that, that this sort of thing leaves me a, a little creepy. Eight twenty-five. Not much chance of anything happening. Even one of Bowen's spooks couldn't get through this place, Ned. Unknown danger, like summer lightning. Strike where least expected. I'll have another look around. Just a minute. All right, Myers. Mr. Gage is one of the family. Thanks. Picked up Bowen yet? No, but we'll get him. He hasn't a chance of getting out of town. Excuse me, madam. Good evening, sir. Has Mr. Phelps arrived yet? Not yet, sir. Search the neighborhood. What's the matter here? Mrs. Lowell was shot through the head from outside the house. What? Must request no one enter. Except police at present. Yes, but you can't stop me. Better stay here. You wouldn't like to see it. Find anything? Not yet. But uh, this gentleman just drove up. Dick has told me. It's, it seems unbelievable. Whoever it was outguessed us. I don't see how it was done with the place surrounded by police. Also strange. Murder should occur at exact hour of appointment. Hello. Morton speaking from the Lowell House. 
Send out the homicide squad and the coroner. You'll want to hold the body till after the inquest, of course. What's happened? Was it Mother? Let me go to her! Can do nothing now? Why did you let it happen? You knew she was in danger. It's all your fault. Oh, oh Mother! Please. Better take the young lady away from the house for the night. We'll have a lot to do here. Come along, Harris. Mr. Chan, I can't help but feel that Alice is right in holding you responsible. You proved that Bone was guilty of the murder of Alan Colby. You knew he made an attempt on Mrs. Lowe's life last night, yet you failed to turn him over to the police. The most humbly regret, very fatal error, which caused life of dear old friend. Mr. Chan, I'm sorry I lost my head. I know you did the best you could. Extend deepest sympathy. But the loved one seemed to be taken away. Remain always near. Mr. Baxter. Yes, sir. Ah. Oh, so sorry, but need your help. Uh, what do you make of this? Someone's been smoking, sir. Oh. The villain must have stood right here when he fired that fatal shot. No. <laughs> Hasty deduction, like ancient egg, looked good from outside. Shot come from high-powered rifle, fired from distant place. Really, sir? May I ask, uh, please, to climb tree? Oh, must I, sir? <laughs> Ample proportions limit athletic ability. <laughs> Yes, sir. Will you give me a leg up, sir? When I was young, I, I used to be quite agile, sir. But, uh, there's not very much to be seen from up here, sir. Observe a small branch near right hand. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Break is uh, clean cut. Might have been done with a saw, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, please uh, hold finger on branch. Oh. from line of vision. job early, Mr. Chan. Find anything? Hope to establish important fact. Let me in on it. 
must first exact promise of silence. I promise. As Sunday would say, okie dokie, let us go. Well, what legend is this, Mr. Chan? At last, find use for simple geometry. High-powered bullet takes shortest distance between three points. Criminal, very clever. A range device so when electric hammer strike bell also operate trigger on rifle. And uh, after the first shot was fired, it kept pulling the trigger. Yes. Be careful. You've reloaded the chamber. How you know magazine was full? Well, uh, I thought it might be. Quite right. But that's dangerous. Why, when the clock strikes again... Do not disturb. 20 minutes after 9. Suggest we return to Lowell House immediately. She was sitting right there when the shot came through the window. Pardon interruption, please. Oh, come right in. Got into any new trouble? So sorry to disappoint. May I offer a slight demonstration, please? Help yourself. What's it going to be, interior decorating? <laughs> Why don't you try a couple of sunflowers in it? Atrocious libel on Chinese art. Quite sufficient. I have only little time to wait. Please, to stand back. Stand back! Are you all right, Baxter? I don't know, sir. You win, Charlie. What's the answer? If the tongue in Tao Bell could speak, would have solution. What does that mean in English? Uh, suggest we take a short walk. Hello? Hello? It's your office, sir. Morton talking. Be there right away. Well, they've caught Bowen. Instead of your short walk, how about a short ride to my office? Voice of Professor may tell us more than tongue of silent bell. I didn't do it, I tell you. Whoever killed Alan Colby tried to hang it on me. And I suppose you didn't plant that trick light and wash Alan Colby's face with quinine so you could pull a phony ghost at your seance. Have you anything to say? Leave her alone. She had nothing to do with it. Well, how about it? You can save yourself a lot of grief for turning state's evidence. I have nothing to confess. I have always acted in good faith. Well, that's all for now. Take them out. Four hours wasted. But I'll get it out of them if it's the last thing I do. Have idea. Another one? With proper lever, baby's fingers can move mountain. What do you mean? Believe have a plan to secure much desired confession. I don't see why we should have been called here for this morbid nonsense. Well, there's no use complaining about it. You have no right to bring me in on this. Yes, well, you're here, brother. All right, Harris. 
Come on inside. All set, Charlie. Thank you. Please. Request everyone take same positions as on night of eventful sales. Oh, Harris. Stand by the door. Have men in the hall and be sure the outside of the house is covered. Yes, sir. Pardon, please, inconvenience of bringing everyone here tonight. Motive for recent murders, like tangle of many strings, ends of which held by persons in this room. First string held by psychic mediums. Professor Bowen and Carlotta had $100,000 endowment to lose by change in will. Same change deprived Mr. Phelps, administrator of estate, from handling large fortune. Have ascertained he had recently big losses in stock market. Caretaker Ulrich have old time grudge against Alan Colby for tragedy to daughter. Other strings held by loyal family who have everything to lose if Alan Colby return to claim estate. Tonight we'll try very sincere experiment in effort to untangle motives. We'll call upon spirit world for message from great beyond. Proceed, please. Mr. Gage, will you turn down the lights? We will pause a moment in meditation. I feel her presence near. It is a woman. She is trying to come to us. Her image is becoming clearer. Clearer, she is trying to speak. She has a message, a message for... Mother! I have come back to tell you the truth. I know now the one who fears discovery. The one who murdered... See that no one leaves this room. Someone make very foolish mistake. Throw knife at spirit reflection in mirror. May come out now. Yes, dear. You have to die to really find out how much people miss you. But why did you do this? I let Charlie explain that, dear. Sincerely hope explanation will justify cause of anguish. Person who throw this knife also kill Alan Colby when he returned to claim estate. Place body behind secret panel. Then use ultraviolet ray device to make body appear as apparition at seance. Same murderer also tried to kill Mrs. Lowell on night of business conference. But make mistake of shooting dummy, which Humble Self and Mr. Morton place at study window. 
Same murderer now in this room. Use twin of knives that kill Alan Colby. Observe. Both knives now missing. As I stood up right here, someone passed me in the dark. I heard someone too. It was you, Ulrich. It wasn't. I, I was over there near Mr. Morton. You went for that knife. I didn't, I tell you. I didn't you lie. I, I didn't. I didn't. I heard that woman, please. You are guilty man. I? You're crazy. Contradiction, please. Took precaution before seance tonight to cover blade of knife with graphite. Telltale fingers sign confession. Stand back. Everybody. Stay where you are. You commit murder in attempt to cover evidence of forgery in Lowell accounts. All night tonight convict you. All right, Harris. Come on. I know you had nothing to do with it. Very grateful for valuable assistance. Believe that tonight you practice deception for first time. Wish I could say the same for you, Bowen. After all, I'm the one who's imposed upon, and I withdraw all charges against them. We'll mark it closed, Mrs. Lowell. Thank you. There's a train east at 11.45. Goodbye. Goodbye. You take now. <laughs> Charlie. I think you've earned a rest. Now we can settle down to a comfortable visit. <laughs> so sorry, but uh, must return to happy family in Honolulu. You've done a great job, Charlie. <laughs> I wish I could make you a present of the city hall. <laughs> if uh, family continue to increase, it may consider a generous offer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>